Rahmi, mean, would you like the um, offering of the mandala? I will show the screen shortly. Is that okay for you? Mm, I don't think I know how to do that. Just, just recite from the offering of the mandala that I normally share on the screen. Let me show you. Uh. Yeah, this is the offering of the mandala that we do at the beginning of the class. Mm, but I think that, there's some portion that you have to repeat, right? Yeah, offering of the mandala, you say one time, and then mm. I will move the screen to the taking refuge and let me show you this one easier. The one the kui, yeah, the kui, refuge and the wish. This one you read three times. Okay. Uh, I will show you the screen, no worries. Okay. Mm, okay. Um, thank you. So Hey, the recording is on. Welcome back, everyone. This is ACI 3, Class 8. Today is 31st of October, 2024. And without further ado, let's just dive in. Um, we just dive in first, then we will set our personal, I'll give you some time to set your personal motivation. Okay, so I'll share the screen. Okay, Kai Chi, I'll show you this one, the offering of the mandala. This one read one time only, okay? Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Here's, here is the great earth, filled with the smell of incense, covered with a blanket of flowers. The great mountain, the four continents, wearing a jewel, of the sun and moon. In my mind, I make them the paradise of a Buddha and offer it all to you. By this deed, may every living being experience the pure world. Indam Guru Ratna Mandalakam Niyatayan Mia. Refuge and the wishes. I go for refuge to the Buddha, the Dharma, and Sangha until I achieve enlightenment. By the power of the goodness that I do in giving and the rest, may I reach Buddhahood for the sake of every living being. I go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I achieve enlightenment. By the power of the goodness that I do in giving and the rest, may I reach Buddhahood for the sake of every living being. I go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I achieve enlightenment. By the power of the goodness that I do in giving and the rest, may I reach Buddhahood for the sake of every be living being. Thank you, Kaichi. Hey, I would like to invite you to take about maybe not more than one minute. Okay, you invite you to close your eyes and to set your motivation. How the how you can link what we are doing today to some specific situation in your life and then bring it to the higher goal.
you bring your mind back to the space here when you are ready. Okay, so let's uh, look at our threes. Question one. Question one. Jenny, would you like to lead us on this? Maybe discussion or anything up to you. I can I hear you? You're muted. Sorry. Stage three, patching up the gap in the continuity of our focus is mainly achieved through the power of the grandpa. I think that would be my response. And I'm trying to, I remember something about the grandpa yeah. just now when I did the homework, but I'm um, trying to, to explain what grandpa means. Mm. Let me see if I can recall. Very good. Grandpa is correct. Yeah, maybe give us a bit of explanation on what is grandpa. Maybe for those you might say, well, what is grandpa? I cannot remember. Mm. I need someone to help me. Let me just see whether I can refresh my memory. Anybody want to jump in and help Jenny on this grandpa? Bringing back the thoughts gently. Very good, yeah. Remember the sexy cowgirl? The sexy cowboy? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you remember that. The picture is very strong in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Thank thing. Thank you. Good, good job. Let's do question two in stage four. Ah, Raymond. Come, Raymond. Uh, in state four, we have uh, fixation, fixation, and gravity, fixation, and gravity, and intensity. In state four, we have, I think we have the fixation and gravity. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Uh, actually, we only have fixation. Well, one, two, three, four is quite basic. By four, we have fixation. Okay, but it's a good attempt. Now yeah, we learn together. Fixation. Okay, I won't go and touch the different stage, and huh? then you, you will take up too much time. Uh, let's do question three. Zane, would you like to do this? In stage five, there is no more uh, gross dullness, subtle dullness, or subtle agitation. And my answer is subtle downers. Subtle downers. Ah. So fast, ah. subtle downers. Mm. Stage oh, sorry. four. Gross downers. Mm. Yeah, gross downers. Okay. Because stage four, you still have a gross downers. By the time you go to stage five, you overcome your gross downers. Okay, okay. good job. This is difficult, man. Okay, question four. I see Angela is here. Angela, would you like... Oh, she's on the phone. Mm. Richie, would you like to read this? This is a bit difficult, but there's only one answer. Okay. Uh, question four. As a result of overcorrecting subtle downness, we'll kick in uh, gross agitation, subtle agitation, or gross downness. So uh, our answer are all subtle agitation. Are you sure? Actually, I remember agitation. <laughs> I don't remember it's gross. Okay. Or... okay, you are correct. Actually, it's after agitation. <laughs> uh, just joking with you. And, and the last one, eh? Emerald. A lot of discussion on this one. Yes. 
And which of the following describes stage seven? Uh, small effort is required at the beginning. Some effort is required during meditation. No effort is required at all. So <clears throat> stage seven is classifying the mind totally. So personally, I think that no effort is required at all. But I can still consider about small effort is required at the beginning. I'm not sure, but that my final mm. choice is still no effort is required at all. <laughs> no effort is required. Oh, no effort is required should be stage nine. Stage nine will be no effort. Yeah? Okay. Stage nine will be no effort. And then if you look at the Seven and eight, so <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are done with the quiz. Today is chapter 8. I look at it very heavy. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Okay. So chapter 8 is on the object of meditation. The object of meditation. I want to quickly show you where we are so that uh, but I won't go into detail. I will go into the detail maybe in a later class, maybe class 9 or class 10. If you remember where is this picture? Yeah. Okay. We are at this one, the last one now. Okay. Just to show you where we are. Okay. Today we are on this one, object of meditation. So class 8, 9 and 10 will be this one. Okay. So this one, let me close this. So today we are on the object of meditation and we are cover three main uh, topics, three types of meditation, highest object of meditation and how to choose your teacher. And each choice will create your future. Each, the decision that you made, the choice, your choice will create your future. Okay, we are going to look into it. How does that affect my future? What do you mean by that? So today, the first topic will be three types of meditation. Now, the first one, the three types, right? So the first type will be called Jogong. Jogong. Please say after me, Jogong. Jogong. Okay, Jogong is fixation meditation. Jogong is fixation meditation, which means that you put your mind on an object. You put your mind on an object. If you know, we always do breath meditation, right? We always say, put your mind on your breath. And this is fixation meditation. And we also learn in chapter one that we say, what is meditation? bringing our mind back again and again, again and again, right? And then we become like the quality, we become like the object. So we don't want to bring our mind back again and again, again, again on our breath all the time. If that, I, we don't want that to be our, the only object of our meditation, but we do breath meditation just to shift gear just to bring our mind to neutral, right? At the beginning of our meditation, okay? But that is not our ultimate, ob ultimate object of meditation. Okay? And if we are going to fix our mind on an object, we will want to choose virtuous object. Virtuous object like what? Like we want to maybe think about our lama, think about a holy guy, Right, think about an enlightened being. Those with the qualities that we would like to become. Right, 
and those quality, if we keep on bringing our mind to that quality, we become like the quality. Kind of like, they out. Kind of like we get that quality, you know. Yeah. So that is jokgum, fixation meditation. Again, to summarize that, you put your mind on an object. Okay? And we, uh, breath meditation, breath meditation is in this fixation meditation. We say that we don't want breath to be our object of meditation, but doesn't mean that we cannot do breath meditation. Prana doesn't mean we cannot do it. And the purpose of doing our breath meditation is just to shift gear only to our main meditation, to make our mind neutral. Especially when we are working or we just wake up, you know, we want to disengage from what we were doing a moment ago. Okay. So if you are going to do fixation meditation, you want to choose virtuous object like think about Michael, okay? think about an enlightened being, Mason Buddha, okay? Think about those being with those ultimate qualities that we want to become. Okay, so jogom, okay, jogom, jogom, jogom in your mind. Say jogom, jogom, jogom. And the next one we learn is shagom, shagom, shagom. Say many times because if not, by the time you say the three words, the three pattern words, you get confused already. Okay, <laughs> say this shagom. Shagom is review meditation. Review meditation. What do you mean by review meditation? It means that you review the list of things. Review the list of things. Okay, and we have learned in ACI 3, from the beginning, you can review the six preliminaries, you can review the seven ingredients, you can review the six conditions, you can review the seven point posture, you can review the five problems and eight antidotes, you can review the nine stages of meditation. Can you see that? Not? It's very useful. You are doing the review meditation all the time. In fact, I would find that um, in the corporate, it is particularly useful before, um, before we start our day to go through a review meditation of the list of things that we want to do. Okay. Again, outline of things that we need to do. And when we review the list, we can review from forward one, two, three, four, five, six. For example, six preliminary. Keep on doing that one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, you keep on reviewing in your mind. And then you can go backward. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Six, five, three, two, one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And then you go mix order. For me, I play around like, what is four? What is six? What is one? One is three, you know, you move around, then you're able to see that picture come to your mind. Cannot then just open your eyes, like, don't punish yourself, like, okay? Don't sit there and meditate. Are you, I cannot think of that one. Just open your eyes, it's okay. Just open your eyes and look at it. Oh, okay. Then you just go, go back. At the end of the day, is to help us. Huh? And you'll see that very clear. You'll see it very clearly in your mind. Okay, so re uh, this uh, review meditation, Shagum is very, very useful. Okay, so you remember just now what is that called? Jokgong. This one is Shagong. Okay. You have to say many times your mind later, by the time the third one comes in, then you mess up everything. Jokgong, 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 Shagong, Shagong, Shagong. Oh, you just now mentioned lasso. Yeah, the lasso, which is a uh, grandpa. And the next one, the third meditation, we call it chegum. 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 Say chegum. Problem solving meditation. This is a problem solving meditation. 
you put the problem at the center stage of your mind. And then you analyze from different angles. The ang you analyze from, from different angles. Okay? I can give you an example like, there are so many examples. I give you one example would be like, if I say, we learned that we say everything in this life is a suffering. It's kind of a suffering, including the good thing. So you bring that to your mind at the center stage of your mind and you analyze, you debate with yourself. You debate with yourself. Okay. I find that this uh, Chagong problem solving meditation is very, very useful for us to have a realization, internalize something. Hmm. It will help you a lot if you bring to a meditation. Yeah. You for me, if I open my eyes, uh, I find that what I learn is very super very uh not superficial, very well, no? on the very surf surface on a surface level. But if you bring that into your meditation, like I'll ask myself, is that past life? They analyze analyze from different angles. My Lama, my Buddha? How can my Lama be my Buddha? She's acting like that, okay? So you, you, you analyze, you debate with yourself. Why they say that? Why is a suffering? Why is even the good thing is a suffering? Why is even the pleasant thing in life a suffering? So you bring it to your mind and you debate. And then you come to a conclusion. The conclusion that you get, then you will do the first one, Jokgum. You do Jokgum. You switch to Jogong using that conclusion as an object. Okay? So, we learn this is in your question number one. Name the three different types of meditation. Uh -huh. Now it's my time to test you already. Hi, Lynn. I see you. All right, Angela, you're, you're on your mask, face mask at all. Oh, okay. no. No lah, because um, I outside whole day I don't want to you know pass to my mother like if I get anything man, so put a uh, mask better. Mm, ah. okay. yeah, very thoughtful of you. Good. Okay, let's come back to this one. Ah. Let me see. Yeah, Angela asked, "What is chokum? What is chokum? Chokum? Did you spell correctly? Or not J O K G A M. Are you saying chokum? J O K G A M. Chokum." <laughs> Uh, chok -kong. no no chok chok -kong. the second one the second one I miss it. I miss second the second one, one. second, second is shagong shagong oh, oh shagong then the, then in the Shagum. case it's the first one uh, first one uh. first one is one uh. okay Angela said chokong is a fixation correct and Jenny already uh, she replied yeah. fixation fixation put your mind on the object correct so you want an easy way don't jump here and there for me follow the list given, then when you're very smart already, you can go any way you want. Okay, go with the first one. Jogom, then Shagom, then Chegom. Ah, go like this. Then you remember, you don't jump here, jump there, you know. For me, I, I find myself, I say, I, I'm not a very smart person. I'm a slow learner. I, I need a way to learn. Okay. Fixation. Shagom, review one, two, three, four, five, six. Then Chegom, put it in the center stage. It's good to have a picture. When you have a picture, easier for you to remember. Like you see, for me, I would say, oh, Chegong will be like the maze. I need to solve the problem. It's like the maze. Okay? So 30 seconds, I'll move on to the next one, uh, these three. Okay, so then Jokgum, Shagom, 
Chegum. Okay, so next one. We say the your choice. We need to make a we need to choose, right? We say your choice will create your future. Each choice create your future. So we have to be very careful with which meditation object to choose. Which one should we choose? We saw, we just now we learned the three types of meditation. Okay, I understand the three types of meditation. Then what should I meditate upon? Now I know, okay, you got three types of meditation. In our class, we are going to use Lam Rim. We are going to use Lam Rim as our object of meditation. Why? Because it is the highest object of meditation. Why? Because Lam Rim, what is Lam Rim? Go back to Lam Rim. We learn Lam Rim. Who can tell me what is Lam Rim? You want to type in the chat? Okay, Isu says steps to enlightenment. Okay, yes. Emerald, yes, this is more complete. Steps on the path to enlightenment. Okay, steps, from the word steps, you know that they got step by step, step by step. Okay, they show you the step by step. Where are they going to lead you to? Enlightenment. So this is the highest object of meditation because they show us step by step and it's complete and it's going to bring us to this higher state. We want to have this reach this higher, higher state of happiness, not just halfway. We want a complete one. You miss one step, you cannot reach total enlightenment. So Lam Rim, Lam Rim they include all the steps. Step by step, you just follow and things will happen for you. You follow, things will happen for you. Okay, it's a complete. Lam Rim is complete. Okay, maybe you can study other things, you know, whether is it complete or not. But for Lam Rim, it is complete. And because it is complete and it can bring you to total enlightenment, then, of course, it is the highest object of meditation that we want to use in our meditation. So just now we say Lam Rim. Lam Rim is the steps of the path to enlightenment. Emerald got it correct. Yay. Okay. And where does this name come from? The name come from the scripture on the perfection of wisdom from Prajna Paramita. Okay, so this Lam Rim, the name come from perfection of perfection of wisdom. I like this picture, Lam Rim. Lam Rim is like this, you know, like you buy the furniture from Ikea, they got the instruction manual, they will tell you step one, do like this, step two, do like this. You just follow and you can get the whole piece of furniture up easily. So Lam Rim is like that. We just follow step one, step two, step three, and they can bring us to this highest state of enlightenment. I like this picture. I really like this picture. That is Lam Rim. Yeah. If you miss one component, you cannot reach, you cannot reach total enlightenment. So Lam Rim is the best because it's complete. It's complete with all the steps. You follow step by step. What um, why do I say it's complete? Huh? How you know it's complete? Okay, so let's look at this one. Okay. Why I say it's complete? It is complete in the sense that Lamrim consists or incorporates all the five great texts of original Buddhism. The five great books of original Buddhism is in Lamrim. And therefore, Lamrim is complete. Okay, what are the five great texts in Lamrim? This one you can memorize. Uh, I actually, when I learned that, I never memorized. After a while, then you know some, you forget some. Then finally, when I want to prepare the material, you put them together. Okay. So the five great texts will be, for me, when I want to remember that time, I always put three and four together. I would say, Vinaya, okay? Vow morality. 
higher knowledge Abhidhamma. Okay. These two, three, and four, uh, they are Hinayana or Theravada. 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 Thailand. The Theravada teachings that reach Thailand. Thailand, they practice this Theravada. And then the other Greek text in Lamrim will be Perfection of Wisdom, Prajna Paramita. Then we have Middle Way, we have Middle Way, yeah, Matyamika. Then we have Logic and Perception. We will learn Pramana and ACI 4. And I read from the class notes, I'm not very sure on this, uh, from the class notes, they say that 3 and 4 reach Thailand. Some of the books never reach the country. Uh. Some of the books uh, reach certain country, some doesn't, don't reach certain country. Okay, 3 and 4 is Theravada. No wonder they are mm, Hinayana. Okay? And then accordingly, 1, 2 and 5, they are Mahayana. 1, 2 and 5, they are Mahayana. Okay, so I have to rely on the class notes on this. I'm not sure on that. And they say, if you study all the texts, you can see that there is no contradiction at all. If you have not studied, you study one part, of course, you say, hey, why is that not the same one? Huh? If you study all the five, one, two, three, four, five, you, you will realize that there is no contradiction between them at all. Okay, so again, Lamrim, we choose Lamrim as our object of meditation because it is complete and it can bring us to total enlightenment. So the next question we want to ask, is Lamrim an open teaching or a secret teaching? Lamrim is an open teaching. Okay, it's an open teaching. We are learning open teaching. Then the next question will be, is the secret teaching mentioned or taught in Lamrim or not? Yes, it is taught, but not in detail. Okay, it is just mentioned, but not in detail, not taught in great detail. Okay, and this is in your question three. Okay, so Lamrim, when we learn Lamrim, we will come to our mind, we will come to... Uh, if you remember, we learned Lamrim in ACI 1. Remember, we learned Lamrim in ACI 1, right? ACI 1. We mentioned about um, J. Sankapa. J. Sankapa, he 1357 to 1419, he wrote this Lamrim Chen Mo. It's the long presentation of Lamrim. And then Lambrim, they have the long presentation, the medium presentation, and the short presentation. Okay, in ACM, we learn about that. Okay. The long presentation is about 1,000 pages. Then the medium presentation, about 400. Then the small presentation, about 10 pages. And we also learn that the three principal paths, which is the, um, the heart of the Lambrim instructions, uh, written by J. Songkapa to his student, Ngawang Drakpa. Okay. So we also learn about that. Okay, so now in this class, we are going to learn Lamrim again. We are going to learn the brief Lamrim. Brief, the short one. And it's called The Source of All My Good. The Source of All My Good. Okay. Also written by J. Songkapa. There's a very long story, a very beautiful story about this. I, I, I did a summary uh, and let, later I'll just uh, read out uh, to you. Uh, the Source of All My Good uh, is written by J. Songkapa. And this is the brief Lamrim. This is the brief Lamrim. Very, very beautiful. The first verse you have to memorize later on. Yeah, that is your homework. Okay, You have to memorize the first verse. I'll show you later. And he wrote this at Radrang Monastery in 1402 at the foot of a statue of Lord Atisha. So this is in your question four. I'm going to tell you the story shortly. Mm. But before that, I need to reverse. Okay, I missed up one thing I think is important. So we'll talk about Lamrim. 
written by uh, J. Songkapa, right? But the first Lamrim is written, and uh, not written, is spoken by um, Lord Buddha. Because we say that Lamrim, the name comes from perfection, perfection of wisdom, right? So perfection of wisdom, obviously, is it is uh, spoken by Lord Buddha. Okay, so it's not uh, uh, J. Songkapa, he created on his own, uh, so the first Lamrim is taught by uh, Lord Buddha in the perfect expansion. There's a quotation in the perfection of perfection of wisdom. In case that we say, hey, how come uh, uh, it's written by J. Songkapa? Okay. There's a long story, the least. Uh, I didn't go into that part. I want to. I want. I think it's a very beautiful story. I want to talk about that. Actually, I go to the reading and this is my notes. Lah. But I don't think, I'm not sure whether you can see or not. Nah, but I'm going to read to you. No worries. Okay, I'm going to read to you. In ACI 1, we learned that J. Songkapa, he got the dictation from Manjushri. You remember, right? He got the dictation from Gentle Voice. Right? He was, it is said that he was in direct communication with Manjushri, Gentle Voice. And in the initial stage, when he was in his early 30s, he was already in communication with gentle voice, but through Lama Umapa, there's a go-between. Lama Umapa is a go-between. And then later on, he can have a, he can actually communicate directly with Manjushri. And in his early 30s, that time, he's still not capable to do so. He cannot see the angel directly. And... How we get this information, all this information you can find from the reading. Um, this thing we get from the secret biography by his close disciple that talk about J. Songkapa's inner life. Okay, so I want to take some of the important points to give us some confidence, okay, <laughs> to know where this thing comes from. In one of the scenes, J. Songkapa, he posed a question to gentle voice. And then, gentle voice answer him, actually answer him. And then gentle voice pause and J. Songkapa said, I still have more questions. Gentle voice said, don't forget the answer I already give you. Go now and record down. There are three practices you must undertake with devotion and passion. Number one. Come to see your Lama and your high secret angel as one and the same and make supplication to them. Two, collect goodness and purify yourself. Three, use intellect and investigate the true meaning of the books and contemplate the meaning. Follow these three practices and the seeds that I plant within you will flower. And that is uh, what a gentle voice told J. Songkapa. Interesting, isn't it? Right? Interesting. Uh, there's something for us to think about that. I was thinking the three practices, where am I? You know, sometimes you have to measure myself. I say, did you do the three practices or not? <clears throat> Through J. Songkapa, we received this message from Manjushri that says that follow the three practices over a long period of time. What are the three practices? Number one, come to see your Lama and your high secret angel as one and the same and make supplication to them. Means a begging them. Okay. Can we see Kashi Michael and our high secret angel as one and the same and make begging, begging them and try to reach out to them. There's one very interesting thing, you know. I went to a church, uh, and coincidentally, I went to their, that one is for very, very, uh, I mean, senior students, you know. So, I, somehow, I was there, you know. And I saw their prayers. Uh, I said, wow, this one very quiet, man. This is exactly this one, you know, how you should reach out to your, you how you should reach out to your Lord. Wow, I'm so like, I was like, shocked for a moment, you see. But then I learned from there, kind of like get the, uh, the idea. Really, there are so much devotion, so much devotion, so much connection, trying to reach out to their Lord. 
And I find that that is missing in my life. Yes, I do pray to Medicine Buddha. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm nowhere there. You know, I think I have to do something on that. I, I think I have to do something on that. So there's something that gives me another insight. And I and I think that, you know, you say you you if, um, you can take that as a message from the angel. What I need to do, you know, I cannot, it's like out of my, you know, there's a ceiling. That's what I thought I'm doing. Then I see how people pray. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's something I want to improve upon. So this is the message from Gentle Voice to Jay Songkapa. See your Lama and your high secret angel as one and the same. That's the thing I say, you bring it to your analytical meditation, your chegum. Yeah. You need to do it many times until you're kind of like, mm, yeah, I think, I, I don't want to tell you the answer. You come to the realization yourself. Yeah. It's not black or white. Okay, I can't tell you. Eh? That is the first one so important. To collect goodness and purify yourself. We do that all the time. We collect goodness, collect goodness, and we purify ourselves. We do purification all the time. So number two, I we did that. I think all of us, we do that. I'm not sure, number one, maybe you did, I didn't. Okay, I didn't do well enough. Number three, use your intellect and investigate the true meaning of books and in contemplate the meaning. So we do it. We are in ACI class. We are thinking about emptiness, you know. We are thinking about the pen. We are thinking about the two husbands of the kitchen. We are doing that. So what I'm lacking, I think, will be number one. Yeah. So, so this is uh, the message that I get uh, while I'm preparing for this one. Uh. Mm. And they all come nicely. Uh, my, and my visit in the church and this, put this together and show me what I need to work on. So the story haven't finished. I continue. So what happened with will be J Song Kappa. He makes supplication. If you don't know the word supplication, I can tell it's begging. You, know, you check the dictionary. It's like begging. Okay, makes supplication, prayer for the blessing of all the Buddhas and the Lama. And therefore, that leads us to our present work. That is the source of all my good. That's how this thing come about. Okay. And I want to go into a little bit more detail. Jay Songkapa, he went into retreat. He went into retreat and above his quarter, the place that he stayed, above his quarter, there is this statue of Lord Atisha. At the foot of, at the foot of Lord Atisha, he knew down and back. He knew down and back and made supplication to the Lama of the past. I saw that in the church. That's how they do it. Exactly the same way. And suddenly, he go into the vision and see the lineage of the Lama face to face. And then Atisha came to him and placed his hand on his head and said, Do mighty deed on behalf of the teaching and then I myself will assist you in reaching the goal of enlightenment. So, that is how you see? And immediately after the vision, Jay Songkapa, he came up from his retreat. He was approached by the students. The students asked him, can you please write a detailed account of how to reach total enlightenment? Can you please tell us ABCD and instruction manual? Please. Okay. So he went back to his retreat. Okay. And there at Radrang, Radrang Monastery, he complete this Lamrim Chenmo. Lamrim Chenmo is a big volume and then there's a small volume. It's a source of all my good. That's where we have this Lamrim Chenmo okay? to tell you where they come from. Interesting. And there's something that we can learn from here. Yeah. I definitely learned something from here. And therefore, the seeds planted by gentle voice earlier on has now flower, kai hua la, flower, as for to. I think the story is important, so I would just want to tell you about the story. I, I go and pick the thing and then I summarize it a bit so that uh, you get the gist of that. But if you want to read, you can go to page 118. 
And therefore, we are here to learn the first verse of the source of all my good. This one you have to memorize. Ah. This is in your homework. Ah. This one you have to memorize. The source of all my good is my kind Lama, my Lord. Bless me first to see that taking myself to Him in the proper way is the very root of the path and grant me then to serve and follow Him with all my strength and reverence. Another name for the source of all oh my good, there's another name for this book. It's called Begging for a Mountain of Blessing. Begging for a Mountain of Blessing. Blessing of what? Blessing of all the Buddhas in the universe. Uh, that when if we read, uh, they always say Buddhas of the Ten Directions, you know, things like that, you know. All the Buddhas in the universe to help us achieve everything from beginning up to final enlightenment. Maybe we don't like the word begging, but it's, uh, I, I really personally learn a lot from the church. Uh. I see how they beg for blessing, how they beg their Lord. Uh, that is something really very touching. As they beg their Lord, I was there begging at the same time. In fact, I joined them and begged at the same time. And, and they cried, I also cried. <laughs> okay, and it's so touching. And, say, I, and I'm so impressed with how their Ling Tao, their leaders uh, lead them. Uh. Wow, and I learned something from there. Okay, you have to memorize that. You know how I memorize when I learned that time, I remember the next morning, then I will write it in a piece of paper. I memorize the first line where I'll brush my teeth. Okay, I go tired. <laughs> the second line, first line and second line join together. Then by the third line, forget the first one. Then, okay, start again. So you have to memorize. It's very helpful. This, you see, even now I close my eyes, I can tell the source of. You see, whether I read correctly, no, 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 I, I hope so. I read correctly. Yeah. The source of all my good is my kind Lama, my Lord. Bless me first to see that taking myself to Him in the proper way is the very root of the path and grant me then to serve and follow Him with all my mind and reverence. Something like that. I hope I read correctly. Match check. So you have to memorize that. It's very useful. Let me see. Uh. Serve and follow him with all my strength and reverence. With all my strength and reverence. Okay. Okay, so that is your homework. It's useful. You will know later why. Okay, <laughs> just memorize first. <laughs> Okay, hey, so now we are going to Lambrim uh, in detail. We want to go into the Lambrim outline, the whole outline. And this is the outline. There are four great divisions of this Lambrim. The root of the path is taking a Lama. Number two, how to practice and purify your mind after taking a Lama. Number three, request for help in practice. Number four, prayer to meet your Lama and to achieve goals. So there are four great divisions. Each one has got a many, many uh, minor, minor, small scope uh, that we need to cover. But today, we are going to focus on number one only. Today, later, we are going to zoom in into number one. Okay? So these four great divisions, when I learned that time, I don't know. I just memorized and write in my homework. I don't remember. But now I'm trying to memorize so there are four great divisions of Lambrim. The root of the path is taking a Lama. And lifetime behavior in relationship with them. You can think of Ken Rinpoche and Kashila. It's a very good example to show us. Huh? I don't think, I, I'm not sure whether I can do that or not. I've been asking myself.
Okay, so this is the four great divisions of lumbrain, which is in your question number five. Question number five, they ask you, name the four major parts of this lumbrain. The four major parts will be the root of the path, taking a llama. B, after you have a llama already, how to practice and purify your mind. Okay? Then, when you want to practice, ask for help. Lah. Number three, ask for help. Number four, pray that, okay? Pray that you meet your teacher. Why, why that? Not many lifetimes, we don't know. This will be one of the many lifetimes. Okay, so we pray that we meet our teachers and we'll always have a teacher in our life, always be guided until we achieve our goal. Okay, now, so these are the four major parts. Today, we will only focus on number one, the root of the path, which is taking a llama and how to follow them. How to take a llama and how to follow them. Okay, Anna. Yeah, how to take a llama and how to follow them. Taking a llama. When we say taking a llama, we learn in ACI 1, Chapter 3, the 10 qualities of a qualified llama. Can you please type in the chat? <laughs> if you remember, you remember just start. <laughs> ACI 1, Chapter 3. Anybody? What are the qualities of a qualified Lama? Uh, I try, but no, and, I mean, uh, they, they must be knowledgeable. Okay. They must be patient. They, they must okay. be no more than the student. No more than the student, okay. Uh, and uh, well, there's somebody got a, they, some of them put, some got an answer there already. Really. Yeah, Emra said a person has an extraordinary training in morality, correct, concentration, correct, wisdom, correct. The first three, yes, that is the first three. Good. I see you show something here. What is that? Huh? I cannot see. Let me see. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Did you do this? Is this your note? Wow, beautiful man. Wow, nice. Okay, so... Uh, Zane, can you read for us uh, the 1 to 10? Slowly, yeah? Uh, read the first three first. You're muted. Do uh, a standard morality. Control themselves well with morality and practice well in ethical way of life. Second one, Shiva. At peace, calm, focus, and mindful. Practice well training of meditative concentration. Three, near Shiva, high peace has obtained full calm, abiding, achieve high extraordinary training of wisdom. So to apply special concentration to investigate reality. Four. Oh, three. Uh, yeah, done. Okay, thank you. That is thank the you. first three. You check and see. Kashi Michael, did he have these three or not? Yes. Yes, very good. So we look at uh, four, five, six. Uh. One, two, three. Then we look at four, five, six now. Four, five, six are written. Uh. Four will be spiritual quality more than the student. Of course, he's more than us. Okay, number five. He's rich in scripture with deep knowledge of the sacred book. Yeah, he's teaching the, uh, his, you know, the mixed nuts, uh, teaching them how to read the scripture, how to translate. And then number six, deep realization of understand and understanding of using reasoning of, of all, all scripture, which is um, to see emptiness, directly or to have a very uh, deep intellectual understanding of emptiness. Of course, we think he, uh, he, he's an Arya, okay? So he satisfied all the quality, yeah? Okay, that's a four, five, six. Then seven, eight, nine, ten will be how he teach. He 
he made great effort. Yes, when you see him, right, uh, he come here, then uh, the signing of the book, you can see long queue, right? I remember in the public talk, there's this uh, thing that we know that he will sign he will, until the very last person. Yeah. If you wait, then he will, he will still sign for you. Uh, great effort. And then he will be uh, willing to make great effort. Um, he's a master instructor. Then he can teach us according to our ability. Think about the pen. Teach out of love. Yes, of course. Why would a person do so much? Huh? We may as well go and watch a movie. Number 10, never tired of repeating or getting discouraged. He repeat the pen so many times. <laughs> okay, so he says satisfied. Oh, the criteria, the 10 criteria. <laughs> Ah, okay, very good. Yeah, Rachel said, yeah, the mind of the teacher, the mind of the teacher, yeah, right, yeah. So the one, two, three, then four, five, six, then seven, eight, nine, ten. Huh? One, two, three is about the um, mind of the teacher, right? Then four, five, six is also about the teacher. Then seven to ten is about how he teach, how he teach. So these are the ten qualities. If you look around, I cannot, I don't know about you, but I cannot find anybody else who fulfill this criteria. <laughs> In my world, I don't see any other than Kashi Michael. Okay, and therefore, J. Songkapa gives us another version. Okay, another version. Another version, which is five qualities only. Five qualities, because we can't find a person who fulfill all these qualities. So, the five qualities, uh, look at this. This one, uh, the first one. They keep their morality. Actually, it's the same as the, the, the first three is the same. Uh. First three is the same. They keep their morality. See, they, don't, they are not corrupted. <laughs> Okay, they are not immoral. Okay, that's the first one. So, can you see somebody with this quality? You ask yourself. Next one, their yeah, meditation is good. I think of Jasmine. Okay, you not like this one. They don't really like to meditate. Don't find this teacher. Okay, <laughs> then the third one, they have wisdom and use it to control themselves. They understand karma and emptiness. Okay. They want to make a better kitchen, a better office. Okay? Not like this one. Every day, go everywhere, quarrel with people. <laughs> Number four. Of course, the person have um, either see emptiness directly or at least have a very deep understanding of uh, emptiness. Deep intellectual understanding of emptiness. That is okay. That is okay. And then love their students. Love their students. Okay, these are the five criteria given by J. Songkapa because we cannot find the 10 qualities because of this age of degenerate time. These are degenerate time. Uh, we cannot find people who fulfill the 10 qualities other than Kashi Michael in my world. So if I cannot find Kashi Michael, I need to find somebody else, right? So somebody who fulfill these five qualities. Another, or alternatively, there is another one. Alternatively, there's another one. This is in your question seven. That person occupy their time more with Dharma than worldly. So they spend a lot of time in Dharma, studying Dharma, practicing Dharma, okay? Everything, their focus is on Dharma rather than worldly. Every time outside want to go and uh, do all those worldly activities. That's number one. Okay, you can find people with that quality or not. Number two. That person is concerned about the future life. Now you're talking about future life, okay? Rather than the present, only this life. Number three, this person take care of other people. They serve people. They serve the people. They serve their teachers. They serve their Dharma community. They serve their, the public. Okay, they serve. Number four, they are not careless with their body, speech, and mind. Means that they don't simply yell at people... Okay, they don't, you know, they, they are careful, they are mindful on, on their body, speech, and mind. And the last one, they won't lead the students on a mistaken path. They won't bring the student to a wrong path. Okay, so when you look at these five, you think that, oh, maybe I can find, yeah, I can find a lot of teachers in my life. Okay, so this is in your question number seven. Remember, Lamrim outline, the first one is what? The root of the path is taking a lama. So we want to find the qualities of the Lama and find a Lama. Yeah, I actually did an outline this one for myself. <clears throat> Everything, the whole outline on Lamrim is in this one piece of paper. Because sometimes I study, study, study. Uh, 
I don't know where they're talking about, you know, here and there. So I'm trying to put all the pieces. This for my own information only. You can do your own notes, like, you know, like how Zane is uh, putting the information in a proper order. So easier for you to recall. Okay, so I'm going to, wait, I want to reverse. I want to ask you about the 10 qualities that Zane written, uh, gave us just now. What is the difference between, my question to you will be, number three, quality number three, having mastered the extraordinary training of wisdom and number, number, I didn't put here, this is from the notes one, the notes one not very, well, I, I better check Zane one. Okay, three and six if I'm not mistaken. Mm, yeah, correct. The same one is correct. Yeah, the notes is not in the proper order. Sixth one is a deep realization. Means, uh, deep realization of suchness means that have seen emptiness directly or have very deep understanding of emptiness. What is the difference between three and six? I, I check this out for you guys. <laughs> uh, sometimes we think we understand after a while. Eh? Mm, I'm confused about three and six. One is a difference. Uh, sounds the same to me. I want to read to you. This is Venerable Jitney's answer. Okay, then karma and emptiness. Whereas number six, deep realization of a deep realization of suchness means that the Lama should either have directly perceived emptiness or achieve a very high intellectual understanding of emptiness true knowledge and understanding of scripture and true logical reasoning. Okay, so we can see the difference. Number three will be you understand come and emptiness. Whereas number six, you either directly perceive, you see emptiness directly or you have very high intellectual understanding of emptiness. Okay? Mm. So that is the difference between three and six. So, so just now we have the structure. I want to go back to the structure. Where is my structure? Okay, so this is question five. This is the five ma four major parts of Lamrim, A, B, C, D. Today I say I'm focusing on A, the root of the path is taking a Lama. So just now we talked about the 10 qualities of a Lama. When we want to take a Lama, of course, um, it would be great if they, the Lama can satisfy the 10 criteria. If they cannot, Jay Songkapa gives us the five criteria. And the five criteria, there are two, right? So you can pick either one in your question number seven. If I'm not mistaken, it's question number seven. So under this, the root of the path, there are, there are <clears throat> under this A, the root of the path, I, look, I like to look at my own notes, you know. I look at this one, uh, if you don't mind. Uh. Okay, number one, uh, you can see one A uh, is to develop faith and admiration. Develop faith and admiration. B, to develop reverence. You don't need to look everything, uh, just one A and B only. Uh. Just how we say. The outline for the whole lumbrim, there are four parts. Correct not? Today, we are focusing on the first part. The root of the path is to take a lama. Under this number one, the root of the path is to take a Lama, there are two sections. A, develop faith and admiration. B, develop reverence. Under this A, there are two parts. How to think of our Lama and how to act towards our Lama. Do you get it? Under this develop faith and admiration, there are two parts. How to think of your teacher. Okay, How to think of your teacher and how to act towards your teacher. They don't give like this. This is my own notes, huh? okay? So now, after I explain to you already, this is in your question six already. Name the four parts to the practice of taking yourself to a Lama. Now you understand where they come from. It's not I say, we focus on the number one. The root of the path is taking a Lama, right? And then number one, there are two parts, A and D. In the answer, they don't give us like that, understand huh? Okay, I'm trying to uh, make it clearer for you. Undertaking yourself to a Lama, there's A and D, all right, which is developing faith and admiration in your Lama and developing reverence for your Lama. 
Okay. B and C is come under A. B and C come under A. Okay, which is how to think of your teacher and how to act towards your teacher. Okay, now, can you get a picture that you can do your own notes on that? Okay, I have my own notes. This one is not easy to understand. Huh? That's why it's good if you draw the picture. You have to draw the, the chart. If you don't draw the chart, like you study, 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 you don't know where they are. Mm. You have to draw your chart. Anybody don't understand this one on the chart, the outline? You can ask now. Okay, so the root of the path, taking a llama. Number one, I focus on number one. Correct? I say today I focus on the number one. Huh? Inside here got two. Develop faith and admiration and develop reverence. Under develop faith and admiration, there are two. How to think of your lama and how to act towards your lama. Okay, now. So you get a picture of this. Okay, yes, give me type one before I continue. Okay. Richie, Zane, Jenny, and Zane, Angela, Isu. If you don't understand, put zero. If you don't get it, you type zero. Don't I? Three, two, one. Okay, thank you. So now, I'm focusing today on the root of the path, taking a llama. Under here, there are two sections. Develop faith and admiration and develop reverence. Under develop faith and admiration, there are two subsections. How to think of your lama and how to act towards your lama. Okay, I like to zoom in into how to think of your lama. I find for you, I go and find for you. How to think of your lama. How should I, how should we think of our lama? I tell you, you don't, you don't want, you won't listen. So I, not to say won't listen, I, maybe you don't say, where did you get this information? So I want to go and find for you from my reading, but I'm going to read to you. How to think of your Lama. Very interesting. I hear they say, if you see your Lama as a Buddha, then the blessing of a real Buddha will come, will follow your mind stream. I read again. If you see your Lama as a Buddha, then the blessing of a real Buddha will follow your mind stream. Wow. Which is on this part. It's also in your reading. It's in your reading. I think it's important, so I take out from the reading. <laughs> and then, there's, they also mentioned that your Lama is the embodiment of all the goodness that a Buddha do in the body, speech and mind. Your Lama is an embodiment of all the goodness that the Buddha do in their body, speech and mind. Okay, I want to repeat that because it's so important, you see. Uh, like for myself also. I'm also struggling. I don't see my Lama as a Buddha. Okay, maybe I see them, but not all the time. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So we want to reinforce what we already learned, what we already know. Okay, we say it's so important. The root of the path is taking a lama. And inside here, how to think of your lama? How to think of your lama? Okay, how to think of your lama? So there are two very important parts from the reading that I found. Very, very important. I feel very important. First, which is to see Kashila, lama, as a Buddha. Then the blessing of the real Buddha will follow our mind stream. Then number two, remember that your Lama, Kashila, is an embodiment of all the goodness that a Buddha do in their body, speech and mind. So if you understand, you study emptiness well enough, you will be able to see why. You will be able to connect why. Remember, the Buddha got four bodies. The body that the, the, the Buddha can emanate in the form that is useful that is helpful for you, not necessarily all the time become a nice person to you. Maybe you need an irritating partner and so they will emanate, they will send out as an irritating partner to help you to learn emptiness. Or maybe they send out copies of a puppy 
for Lin, baby Lin, <laughs> Lin's daughter. Okay, maybe they will send out a copy of maybe a puppy, yeah, in a way as a companion for that person, whatever they need the most at that moment that will be able to help them. You need to bring that to analytical meditation for me. I find that it's so useful if you can bring this to your chegum, your analytical meditation. Okay, so these two points is so important. I go and pick it up. I hope I share with you. I hope you remember that. Yeah, I hope you remember that. Why we have to see Kashrila, our teacher, yeah, as a Buddha. Yeah, because they are the source of all my good. From the statement, the source of all my good is my kind Lama. So the source of all my good is my kind Lama, my Lord. Because they are the embodiment. They are the embodiment of all the goodness that a Buddha do in their body, speech and mind. What Gashila do, what Gashila say, and what Gashila think. He is the source of all my good. So, if you are able to see your teacher in that way, then you'll be able to serve your teacher in a very different way already. Your mindset is different. It is very challenging to me lately also. I have the, actually sometimes lazy or not willing to take responsibility more than that. You know, you want to take responsibility according to what I want, what I, you know. So it's really challenging me. I won't mention that in this class, you know, I have some. So that's the reason why um, I think I haven't done enough for that part. I did very well, but can be much, much better. So I hope that you also think about that, yeah. Because it's so useful. It's so it's so important. I when I studied that time, I didn't know it's so important. I think partly also, also the lump. I think the lump, those who attended the lump, we study this right in. I think the lump one, if I'm not mistaken. So again, I want to bring your mind back to where we are. We are in the outline, in the outline of lump rim. In lump rim, there are four major parts. This is question five, huh? four major partner. Huh? Today, we zoom in into number one, only the root of the path, taking a lama. Under this alone, which under this 5A, the root of the path, taking a lama, we move to question six. Question six, which is A and D. There are subsection A and D, okay? So now I'm doing A, how to develop faith and admiration. Inside here, there you have subsection of how to think about your lama and how to act towards your lama. And I'm not into this on how to think about your lama, how to think of my lama. Okay, when I serve my teacher, I see my teacher. I should see, I should uh if I understand emptiness well enough, if I go into my meditation, if I'm pure enough, then I'll be able to see my teacher as a Buddha. And if I'm able to do that, then the blessing of the real Buddha will come into, will follow my mind stream. And my teacher is an embodiment of all the goodness that the Buddha do in the body, speech and mind. So how I act towards my teacher, the next one, if I can think of my teacher in that way, then the way I act towards my Lama will be different already, right? Yeah. The way you treat your teacher will be different. Your behavior towards your teacher will be different. Here, how to act towards your lama? Also, I get from your reading. You some of the words maybe you don't like to hear. Surrender. I can see surrender when in church. Make your teacher happy. How to make your teacher happy? Give material things to your teacher. Give money. Okay, three things. Give money. Serve your teacher with your time, your body. You know, serve number three. Practice. Do as what they teach you. Three things. Okay, do as what they teach you. If they ask you to do something, you do. Uh, so long it is not morally wrong. If they ask you to do something, you should do it so long it is not morally wrong. Okay? So I like to bring this to our ACI one. Uh, some of the examples. Remember we say, Ngawang Drakpa, carry out the instruction of J. Songkapa. J. J Songkapa asked him, go, you go. You go to East Tibet. You go and set up 108 monastery. 
he did that. He built 108 monastery and he wrote back a letter to uh, J. Songkapa, right? And he said, what should I teach the student? And that's where J. Songkapa wrote the three principal path, the letter to his student, Ngawang Drakpa. And then you can see Atisha, his student, uh, Drom Tonpa, to clear Atisha's... Uh, Drom Tonpa is very instrumental to Atisha's... Uh, um, how, to, uh, how should I put it? Uh? It's very instrumental to Atisha's uh, spreading of Dharma. I don't have time to talk uh, in detail about that. I'm sure you know also. But if you don't know, you will hear about that as time goes by in the class. We will mention about that. And their relationship because of all these things and also Milarepa, because of all these uh, student and teachers' relationship, the behavior, how you treat your teacher, and therefore they are able to succeed yeah, they are able to have a matchless realization and they are able to succeed in their practice. So this is in ACI 1. I just take from there. Okay. Where is my notes? Okay. So that's the thing. Develop uh, just now this one already mentioned how to act towards your teacher. Yeah, surrender. Make your teacher happy. Give them the money that they need if they need. I'm not asking you to get, uh, to sell your house and give to your teacher, Okay. And then serve your teacher, serve them, and then uh, practice what they ask you. Like they give you certain work to do, do it so long that thing is not morally wrong. Okay. And then second D is develop reverence for your Lama by remembering his kindness. Remembering his kindness. I won't go into detail on this one. Mm. In the Lam, I think they mentioned in great detail. Though, by remembering his kindness. What is his kindness? Teach you the pen and more than that. Okay, it's all in the reading. I take from here the reading. And there's one more very interesting thing would be they say. When you are how you act towards your teacher, you serve your teacher, you do all these things, you are not laboring for them. You are not laboring for them. You know, you are not like, oh, yo, I do for my teacher. No wonder my teacher always say, you know, my teacher always say one word. Use me, use me. When I first heard of it, I got a shock. Yeah, I you know for us, like, use, like, not so nice, uh, the word, isn't it? Well, my teacher always say, use me. I'm here for you. Okay? And who is the one? Who is the one planting the seeds? You are the one who collect the goodness. You should see as a reward. You should see as a great, good, great good fortune to have that opportunity. I'm very thankful I, I, I did uh, take on whatever my teacher gave to me uh, previously. Uh, but now I said, no, I want to come back to Kashila's. Uh, I want to listen from, how should I put it? Uh? Uh, I want to listen to the past Kashila's recording. I've gone through 1 to 18. I want to listen from a different version, different classes in the past. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm so sorry I didn't. I just while doing preparing this, I feel oh no, my teacher say my teacher asked me to come for the retreat in October. I said no. Nope. <laughs> oh my god, you know now when I'm doing this, I yo I said next time my teacher say come for retreat. I say okay, okay. So I, said, <laughs> I have to do confession on that. I didn't do well enough. That's why I'm coming for Lamrim Kyoto. <laughs> I received the invitation. I was like, hey, oh, should I go or not? And I'm very lazy to go. And I said, okay, I must go. You know, since they asked, I have to go. And the last part before we end our session today, very interesting, very, very, very interesting. Yeah, Angela said, yeah. Yay, just... The, um, they say this lamrim in Kyoto will be the final lamrim. I don't know what is up after that, but I know it will be the final one. Okay, one last one before we end our session today. What is the meaning of bless me? Bless me. When you say bless me, hey, I shouldn't show you this one first, and then you are reading from the note. When I first learned when my 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 before I learned Dharma and all this, or when I first started learning Dharma, bless me, give me a lot of money. <laughs> give me a lot of happiness. Give me the thing that I want. <laughs> so then it's to me my definition of blessing, bless me. Then when I study, I realized that, oh, bless me, then it's not the meaning. Bless me here means, okay, now you can see the answer. 
if Miss help me to change my spiritual aptitude, my very ability to learn and to practice Dharma. Okay, that is the meaning of bless me. Bless me means to change, to transform your mind. Transform your mind that you are able to find your Lama and to follow your Lama. Because there is a lot of things that, that we, we don't want to listen. Like for me, you know, sometimes I don't want to uh, quite want to do the extra thing. I'm not sure, but I have pictures of, oh, should I really go so far and do all these things? There's one part of me that is reluctant, that is giving a lot of excuse. So bless me is to help me to change my mind, transform my mind, so that I'll be able, my mind is twisted now. Help me to see that. Bless me so that I'll be able to find and follow my Lama properly. I'm not following my Lama properly. Can I follow my Lama properly? Bless me to be able to do that. Bless me to be able to learn the Dharma well and to practice Dharma, not hear it. And then we say, nah, 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 you, know, you know, so we are able to learn and put it into practice. That is the meaning of bless me. Change your mind, transform your mind. Not, don't, don't be like me. Eh? Bless me means give me a lot of money, give me a lot of things, you know, give me the thing that I want. <laughs> but I can tell you, if you practice Dharma, you do, you plan, you do all these things, the thing will come to you. That's one thing I can tell you for sure. You put into practice, all these worldly things will come to you. And I am a living example in the sense that who am I to be an independent director? Who am I? I know nothing. I really know nothing. And why am I as a, how can I sit on the board of directors in a public listed company? That doesn't make sense at all. I was never doing anything to do with that. You see, I wasn't doing anything with that. I was appointed officially as an independent director uh, on the 9th of September 2021. I can still remember. And for the two years, I sit on the board. I didn't speak much. And I don't know what I'm sitting there for. And I attend training. I'm very good at attending training. I'm very good at attending a lot of training. Uh. And then one day, I think I heard they say, if you're sitting on the board and you never say anything, then you have no value. Then I start to tell myself, I cannot be like that. I have to open my mouth and say something. And I'm so happy. I just had a meeting yesterday in Hong Leong Tower. We had a very important meeting. We had another company going for uh, into the East Market. And I was there asking. I finally, I said, I said, Master Buddha, please bless me. Please bless me. May I be able to speak like, you know? And I went there. I'm so happy for the first time. I said, I act like one. <laughs> I, today I was telling my daughter I said oh mommy so happy you know today for the first time I act like one you know <laughs> so that's the thing bless me bless me to be able to act like one and speak like one and do behave like one so I say um, I feel that it's so important to ask for blessing okay and to transform your mind transform your speech transform your ability to think the way you act the way you speak Okay, and that is the uh, last part. Wait, let me see. Um, did I miss out anything? <clears throat> I like to always think about one thing. If you ask for blessing, if you ask, uh, if you don't ask, you don't get it. If you ask, you plant the seed for you to get it. If you have the seed, it will be awakened inside you. Something will awaken inside you and you'll be able to do so. And the last part will be how to please a Lama. How to make your Lama happy? Put into practice what they teach you. And this is the highest offering you can make. Huh? This is the highest offering you can make. And there's a very great danger that you just learn the information and you just want more and more information. You attend more and more classes, but you never put into practice. They say they will, this will cause your heart to harden. They say that this will cause your heart to harden. Pardon to the Dharma that when you hear again, you say, ah, tingle that I heard before, you know, ah, listen before, you know, you, know? you, do, you don't, it doesn't quite touch your heart now. It doesn't quite touch your heart. So I feel that it's important that we should try to put into practice. Of course, not everything, try your very best to do something, you know, like, you know, you learn this sun, I try to do, I cannot meditate long, but I can do this part. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you must try. If you don't do it, just come to class. Every time come to class, just listen, never do homework, never do quiz, never meditate. Then go for the next ACI 4. You can ACI 1, you can go to 2, 3, 
fall, you can proceed, but you never learn anything and it's actually not good for you. It's not good for you. That's why I say, if you're going to submit through me, I have certain expectation. You have to do your homework. You have to do your quiz. You have to do your final. You have to do your meditation. If you submit last minute and your meditation you didn't do, you can submit through the learning platform, but not through me. I don't know whether how they're going to do it, but if you're going to submit through me, I want to make sure I have responsibility for that. Okay? And I want to make sure you all go through it properly. We call it the transmission. It's so important in our lineage. In our lineage, we have to pass on. It has to be attending the class and pass it on in that way. And you have to do it. And not like keep it and then last minute do it. Uh, that, that is not something... I want it that way. If you submit through me, you have to do it in that way. Yeah. If you're doing, you haven't filled up the spreadsheet, that's okay. That's fine. Okay. But you have to do it. If you piled up and you didn't do your meditation, I won't accept that. You can go through the learning platform, but you don't find me. You don't ask me why I never received my cert. I don't know. Okay. But if you submit through me, I will make sure you receive your certificate. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah? Today we finished that. And we are going to end with the uh, mandala offering and the uh, dedication. I'll go through the normal, the, the one in, given by the ACI. The mm, reading. I need somebody to help me to read this. Eh? Ishu, would you be kind enough to help us to... Read this um, offering of the mandala followed by the dedication. I'll show you the screen shortly. Can you? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Oops, I... Okay. Go ahead. Okay, offering the mandala. Here is the great earth filled with the smell of incense, covered with a blanket of flowers. The great mountain, the four continents, wearing a jewel of the sun and moon. In my mind, I make them the paradise of a Buddha and offer it all to you. By this deed, may every living being experience the poor, the pure world. Idam Guru Ragna Mandalakam Nilyatayami. Dedication of the goodness of a deed. By the goodness of what I've just done, may all beings complete the collection of merits and wisdom and thus gain the two ultimate bodies that merit and wisdom make. I want you to take about um, 30 seconds to one minute to do a dedication. And then if you are, when, you're ready, when you're done, you just bring your mind back here. <clears throat> You bring your mind back here when you're ready. 
and you can open your eyes. Yay, we finished class eight. <laughs>